Back in 2012, a police officer, George Zimmerman, had killed Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old African-American high school student. This story had overtaken the entire country, and journalists across the nation had reported on it furiously. This story, uh, as, I, as a journalist, I believe that uh, dedication to presenting both sides of the story is a commonality all journalists should share. However, this wasn't the case for the story of Trayvon Martin. There was a stark contrast in the types of stories being reported. Here I have two articles, written within the same week by three distinctly different reporters. One article was written by two white men. The other article was written by one black man. Is it immediately noticeable the difference in reporting? I want you to take a quick look at these headlines and determine for yourself who wrote which article. The black man highlighted the tragedy of the event. He discussed how the death of any child was inexcusable. He even talked about how the police department had failed to conduct a thorough investigation and how that led to political unrest across the country. Whereas the two white men had decided to write a story based off ingrained stereotypes. So often in the media, we are exposed to this image of black children as thugs. He was no saint, they said. But that shouldn't be the narrative. Why is the media so quick to demonize black individuals? In 2016, 17% of journalists in US newsrooms were people of color. In television, only 10% of showrunners were people of color. And 11.7% .7 of those in radio were people of color. There's a lack of diversity in our newsrooms, and that is a cause for this disparity in journalism. There are so many stories of African Americans that are worth telling. I've seen and heard them myself. But the majority of news presented in the media fits this crime center narrative. And that needs to change, because this not only affects African Americans, this affects all minority groups. There is an obvious skew on media towards one perspective, and it is a white perspective. And often, it is even more exclusionary as it's a middle-class male perspective. People of color are expected to make up more than half the entire nation's youth by 2020, and more than half the entire population by 2044. People like me. But our voices aren't present in media. So what does this diversity look like in Columbus? In order to gauge how the city of Columbus fared in representation in media, I decided to research the race of each individual reporter and editor at the Columbus Dispatch. The Columbus Dispatch is one of the most prominent papers in the city of Columbus. Thus, its staff should consist of people that make up the racial makeup of the city and its ideas, right? Well, among all the writers and editors creating content for the city, I found that 97% were white. 97%. It is such an outrageous number, and it's such a stark contrast to the actual racial makeup of Columbus, Ohio. Almost 40% of Columbus consists of minorities, of people of color, but our primary news source consists of 0% minorities. It's the expectation that our newsrooms have 95% people of color. Of course not. But our expectation is that our newspapers are conducting the highest quality reporting. And that cannot be possible when there's only one perspective presented in your newsroom. When you have a diverse staff, you have people that are comfortable and experienced talking about certain topics. And that produces better stories. I witnessed this sentiment in action when I attended AAJA high school journalism camp this past summer. My peers came from a variety of backgrounds, varying from different cultural practices and following different religions, while also being a part of communities such as the LGBT plus community. This practice is not commonplace in our schools and in our communities. Working at my school staff, 
I am the only black individual in the newsroom, and only one of two people of color. Working with other school staffs across the state, I see the same homogeneity. Even working at the state and national level with adults, I am only one of few ethnic voices. And that, at times, has led me to feel like my ideas didn't matter. But at camp, I felt like I was given the space to talk about the issues that were important to me and what I felt was important to my community. In Philadelphia, where their camp took place, uh, there, like a lot of cities, had a large minority population. And a large majority of that population also was afflicted by homelessness. And as a woman, I saw that a lot of these people that were homeless were also female. So I decided to cover how domestic violence in Philadelphia had led to homelessness. I had the connection to the story, and I was immediately able to pick up on it. But not a lot of other journalists could say the same. Similarly, I had a colleague who had a Chinese background who noticed walking the streets of Philadelphia the paradoxical nature of the city. There's plenty Asian food trucks. There's tons, in fact. But there was no Koreatown or Chinatown. He decided to investigate that disconnect because, again, he had a connection to the story that not many other journalists could say they had. He was able to investigate that disconnect because of his perspective. It was incredible how, as people of color and as people of different backgrounds, we could analyze the city in a way that others couldn't. I think that, as people of color, our backgrounds and our upbringing is what makes us unique and what gives us perspectives important to the world of journalism. And this is what I learned from that experience. Journalism is the pursuit of truth, but it goes beyond just covering race issues and immigration issues and civil rights issues and ongoing coverage. It's beyond time to throw out this white experience as the sole norm and to include all races in the community as a part of this norm. I want you to ask yourself, when reading the news, how could this story be presented from another perspective? We as a society have to start questioning not just the news source, but the person behind the source. Thank you.